Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Being healthy and fit is essential to having a quality life, but that often gets overlooked and becomes more of a challenge when you have a disability. That's why Mark Fleming was inspired to create Equally Fit, a personal training studio for people with disabilities. But before we jump into this episode, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. I'd also personally like to invite you to two private Facebook communities that I have. One is called Victoriously Living, and the other one is called Crip Chat Club via Zoom, where we meet every Saturday to have real talk within the disability community. I'd also like to ask if you like what you see here to please support us financially at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Hi, Mark. Thanks for being on Chair Chats today. Thank you for having me. I am really excited to talk about this topic because I feel like it's something that often gets overlooked with disability because I feel like oftentimes we're just in survival mode that we don't think about going the extra in order to take care of our bodies. And I want to get into what it is that you're doing. I love this shirt. Is there a way that people can buy that shirt? Yeah, it's on our website. Uh, it, this is the premium. I have a premium and a basic. Uh, this is kind of more for sensory issues. Um, it's really light and, and very, very comfortable. I'm not saying the other one isn't, but this is um, a little more mixture blend. So it, it, it definitely feels a little bit better on the skin if you have those sensory issues. So uh, you can go to our website and uh, get them from there. And that's equallyfit.com, correct? Correct. All right, awesome. Why wait in promoting this to the end? Let's just let people know that if they're interested and you like what you hear about in this interview, go to equallyfit.com, check out Mark more in detail, um, what he's doing and some of his merch that he has available. And I love that you have both options. Can you tell me your story a little bit about what inspired you to do Equally Fit? Um, and like, why did you even think about having both options, the basic and premium for your merchandise? So uh, Equally Fit kind of came about because I thought that my previous company, which was Puzzle Piece Fitness, needed to be more inclusive of all people with disabilities because just working with individuals with autism um, wasn't enough. And that all started because uh, my background is in exercise science. I have a bachelor's and master's. Um, I'm also autistic. So after uh, graduating, I had uh, trouble finding a job like most people with disabilities do because when you disclose um, your disability, whether it's visible or not, people tend to just are not aware of how to um, that, that hiring process and everything. So um, I did a short stint with a uh, applied behavior analysis company where I found out that I worked well with individuals with autism because I can kind of notice sensory issues. Um, my sensory issues are kind of just constant when most people think about, oh, they're over or under sensitive. And so that led me to, to see that. And while I was doing that job, I was also volunteering for Special Olympics because sports were my passion growing up. And so being able to coach um, individuals with um, uh, de developmental disabilities um, and other kind of cognitive disabilities was a passion. And so what I saw, though, is that individuals in their 30s and 40s were having the same kind of physical deficiencies as the kids that I worked with in the ABA company. And so what that told me is there was a gap. There was a 20 year gap of physical inactivity that 
uh, do for whatever reason just occurred and a lot of these adults I volunteered with were just starting to get physically active again. And so to me, that meant no one's there for them to be physically active outside of sports, right? And when it comes to having any kind of disability, you may not be um, very competitive in sports and, and, and whatnot. And so to me, having my background, I knew there were other options. So I filled up my trunk with some equipment and I pretty much just started a, a in-home kind of um, business. In a year, I went from like only two hours to over 40 with 15 hours driving. 15 hours driving was way too much. So I was like, okay, let's find a studio. It took me about a year to find a studio because when you tell realtors and everybody that you're autistic, they're they're not as, as friendly and open to saying, okay, let's talk about getting you this space. So it took a little while. Um, and once I got my own realtor, then I was able to get a space. Um, and then once I opened this up, uh, it kind of started to blossom. It took me a little over a year to get to a point where um, I was actually um, doing really well. And then COVID happened. So but we're, we're starting to, to get back to uh, where we were, which is great because um, helping people is such a passion of mine to be able to um, let people understand that being physically active doesn't mean being in a sport. It doesn't mean being super jacked. It doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean what people, the media portrays being active is. And so um, just seeing these individuals get to a point where they're probably going to be active their whole lives. And that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I feel like there's so much that you said I want to unpack, but first of all, congratulations on a successful business. I love, um, I, I feel like this is a, a dual benefit. Like we're talking about being healthy and fit, but at the same time, you're a disabled entrepreneur who's made it. And I love seeing that. I'm a big proponent of self-employment and, and owning our own businesses and making things happen. So congratulations on that. And thank you for being in, inspiring to me on that. And then you, you know, talking about not everyone's athletic and I would definitely put myself in that category. I am not the athletic type. So for those that are not athletic or want to be involved in sports, what are some techniques that you use in order to help them become fit? And, and maybe let's back up a little bit. What does fit mean? How do you define fit? So fitness is just the, uh, the level of physical activity someone does. So we use just five components, usually uh, muscular strength, muscular endurance, cardiovascular endurance, flexibility, and body composition. Position. Now, obviously, you don't need to be superb in all five to be categorized as fit because, I mean, a NFL lineman is not going to have great body composition and probably won't have the best cardiovascular endurance. But yet, when you look at NFL lineman, you're like, oh, my gosh, that person's fit, you know. And so um, it's really what you want it to be. Um, and one of the things I... I mainly, since I mainly work with individuals with autism, uh, getting individuals with autism to do new things is quite hard in the first place. But um, I just treat my, my clients like humans. You know, if they don't want to do something, well, we're just going to sit around until we do it, you know? And, and um, if they're not having a good day, I'm not going to push them too hard. You know, it's, it's really bringing the personal back into personal training is that it's centered on the person I'm training, not on me because I know how my body works, but not everybody knows how their body works and they have to figure it out along with me because I don't, even though I have a master's in exercise science, I don't know how everybody's bodies work because we're all made just a tight, tiny bit of difference, you know, and, and when you add differences as in um, disability, 
then it can be even harder to understand your own body. So it's kind of a, a process for everybody, you know, and, and it's a, you have to love the process. So it's slow. You have to love yourself. And so it, it's not a, something where you can like be like CrossFit and be like, oh my gosh, this is, is crazy because most people end up getting hurt or they, they just wear out too quickly, you know? And so what I really try to do is just, hey, let's try this and then move from there, you know? And that's all you can really do. So it sounds like it just keeping our mobility, keeping our bodies healthy to the point where we can actually live in them a little bit more. Um, and so, I, I, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you take care of your body, it will take care of you. You've said you work primarily with people who are on the autism spectrum. Do you work with anyone with a physical disability and how would that differ from someone who's on the autism? Yes, uh, one of my clients actually is autism with a physical disability. Um, he suffered a um, stroke in utero. So um, a good, his, one of his sides, is is a lot weaker than the other and doesn't um, function as well as the other side so what i had to do immediately is well we obviously cannot work out that weaker side like we are the stronger side we have to give that side a little more um, freedom to kind of learn how to function better um, obviously it's not going to function um, completely like um, someone that didn't have a stroke but you look at it and you're like okay but we can still improve right like just because you only have use of certain amount of muscles doesn't mean you shouldn't use the ones you have and so it's just um, it's planning it, it's understanding hey when he comes in here with uh, or anybody with a physical disability, it's what can you do? What have you tried to do? What doesn't work? What I mean, like I previously said, it, it's putting the personal back into personal training. Because just because I look at someone and I may not believe they can do something based on my experiences, but you see these people that, that can do whatever they want when they put their minds to it. One of the the best things that I think about with college with me is that I, uh, I interned with our wheelchair basketball team and they were national champions at wheelchair basketball and during breaks and whatnot, I play horse with them and they were, they beat me and I, I had two feet on them closer to the basket, you know, and you're sitting there like, this is crazy. They're, they're super talented, but it, and it didn't matter that they were in the chair, you know? And that's, that's the cool part is that when it comes to any kind of disability, you can, you can work around it when it comes to um, physical fitness. I love that. Um, and I love the, you know, bringing the personal back into the training, personal training. That's so important. And I think, I think what you said is, is actually probably a good, lesson for other trainers like they get so focused on like here are our reps that we need to do and we have to accomplish them and you allow to um the have the client lead that you said on your website it says your goal is to use functional training and i was just curious when i read that i'm like oh what is functional training so could you describe what functional training is yeah a, a lot of people use it kind of as a hype phrase to kind of get people to come in but what I I use it as is we're going to start on things that are going to improve your quality of life at home so squats step ups like things that will um, translate to real life so when you're talking um, full uh, use of your body doing squats Right. If someone doesn't walk, doesn't get up very often in their day, well, if we can improve them doing squats, then they're they're not just getting up once and going to the bathroom, going to get something to eat, doing this, and then sitting. Now they're going up 
to the bathroom, sitting down, getting up, going to get food, sitting down. And that translates to burning more calories during the day and doing more. Um, I've had a lot of clients that have gone on trips and, and go hiking or whatnot, and their parents come back and they're like, I didn't realize how much y'all were actually doing during your sessions because it doesn't look like we're doing much. But in the grand scheme of things, like it, 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 it's a drastic change just by doing these little steps because the majority of, of people in our country especially are very sedentary, so they don't move enough to, to be able to, to fully enjoy life. So those are the best stories when people come back from, from trips and, oh, he didn't even get tired during our hike. And it's like, wow. That is amazing, you know? Yeah. And so functional is being able to translate the exercises we do in the gym to real life. So obviously, if there's a physical disability, we want to um, see how that translates to their real life operation and work on that. Yeah. Um, so that's the best way I can describe all that. Awesome. You know, what I also think happens a lot is that uh, the family members often will do things for the person with the disability and that becomes a habit, right? Where, and so they're not having to get up for themselves to go get that, the food or whatever it is. Um, and even though the intention is good for the, on the family's part, it can actually in the long run, hurt the person with a disability because they're not giving them the opportunity to move their bodies. Do you find that a lot? Like having to um, not only work with the client, but work with family members within the household to understand the goals of the fitness program? Sometimes, um, mainly that deals with um, kind of food intake and stuff like that. Even though I'm not a nutritionist, I do can um, consult on like how much someone's eating and uh, soda is probably the biggest thing. Every time I bring up soda with anybody, I get a, a nasty glare, you know, it's, it's like the worst thing in the world. And so, um, but when it comes to activity, the most of the parents that bring their kids in, they want them to be more active because this is more of a, people see me more as, as, hey, he knows how to do it. So he can help my kid become more active. And since he's trying to do this and I'm paying money for it, well, we might as well try to do it outside. I, I mean, I, I give plans to some, some kids outside just so that they can keep more active. But when it comes to parents, I just try to tell them to be more active with their kids because that's the real change is if a parent does something, the kid's more likely to do it. You know, if the parents on their iPad on the couch, the kid's going to do the same thing. But if the whole family is walking after dinner or going for a stroll, whatever you want to say, then the kid's more likely to be more active, you know? And so just um, it's kind of like their kid inspires them to be more active. And so they inspire their kid, which is, is kind of cool. Yeah. You're like the fitness whisper and the whole family unit. <laughs> Strategy, strategy. Yeah. Um, okay. So we mentioned COVID. So for the audience who's watching this, I don't know when you're watching this, but at the time of recording, we are in uh, the middle of a pandemic called COVID. And you mentioned that it kind of put a dent in your business because we had to all stop do what we were doing. And, and I know um, a lot of gyms and, and such had to close down in order to maintain the health and safety of people. Have you been able to translate what you do digitally online? So right now I do do some Zoom with some of my clients in the area because um, Florida is, is, even though it's getting better, it is, um, we've had some rough months here. So um, obviously going through Zoom, I do can't, or I can um, make some programs. Um, I've 
been trying to get some some um, kind of uh, testees to to do some some programs, but unfortunately, people are ramping up with business and whatnot, so they're not. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to even give kind of fitness programs away just for free because if people aren't invested, then then it's it's it doesn't work as well. So. Um, Zoom's probably the, the easiest way for me. Um, I know when it comes to, especially individuals with developmental disabilities, that people are kind of wary of that because they like the one-on-one -on -one attention and, and being there. But it's worked really well for most of my clients. I did have um, one client that, um, funny story, that he would, almost every other session, he would hide the iPad. And so the, the parent would have to go and kind of find me after I'm like yelling, I'm over here, I'm over here, you know. Um, but that, I, I'd see that as rare. Um, that was uh, a lot was going on during um, that time. It was right maybe a month after Florida kind of shut down. So everybody was still like really panicky and when you have autism, you don't know how to deal with um, your emotions as well. So it really wasn't wasn't like a surprise that that was happening or really um, something to be um, afraid of going forward if, if you want my services and you don't live in Tampa. I'm going to encourage our viewers, if you're watching this, what Mark did is he found a gap. Like, I think we, we rely on our youth. A lot you know like oh well I'm young I, I can eat whatever I want I don't have to work out and we think fit means we're, we're thin and that's not necessarily true either and so we don't give it any thought and then one day we wake up like I, I know like I'm 45 it's like oh you wake up and you're like oh wait what happened to my body and so we don't want to we don't want you to wait um, to wake up one day and wondering what happened and it takes much longer to have to gain all of that flexibility and body composition and muscle strength and every all those five different areas that you mentioned if you're interested in in utilizing mark services please go to equallyfit.com um is there anything out there like if someone's watching this right now mark um is there something that they could do right now that you could think of in order to start on their journey of getting fit yeah, just uh, you can do light cardio. You can um, always stretch a little bit more. Um, I'm, I just started with my parents, and we go for walks every night now. Um, I mean, it's it's just the little things, you know. If if uh, if you have enough mobility, you know, park a little bit farther away so you can 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 walk if you use a wheelchair well try to find some blocks to put it on and spin that thing you know like just just go at it um there's there's so many different things that you can do within your own house you don't even need weights um a lot of times with my zoom i'm using what they have i have a client that just uses books you know big thick books um i've recommended using water jugs you know, there's just tons of things that you can do. And, and you can look up stuff online. There's, there's some good stuff. I'd stay away from Instagram just because uh, a lot of those people aren't properly credentialed. Um, but there, there are a lot of good uh, things out there that, that uh, if you can't, say, go to a gym or you can't hire someone, there's some tools out there. Um, just, you got to dig a little bit deeper than the first thing that pops up. Except your Instagram, go to his Instagram and like it. I know you post different things that you're working on with different clients. So, um, thank you so much for being with us and bringing light to this topic. I want to also thank you, the viewers for tuning in again to another episode of chair chats. I'd also like to ask you if you want to engage and comment in, in the below section. Do you exercise? 
And if not, are you ready to take that first step on your journey to having a more fit body? Because if you take care of it, it will take care of you. And of course, we want to have you here for a very, very long time. So thank you so much. I also want to remind you before I let you go to please subscribe and share and join my private Facebook groups called Victoriously Living or Crip Chat Club via Zoom. And if you like what you see, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed. Mm -hmm.